In this video, we're going to model and then make a drawing of this part. So in this section, I just want to identify our datums and datum features. <clears throat> so here's our uh, datum feature symbol for datum A. The datum feature is a flat plane right here. Datum B is going to be this axis, which also turns out to be two planes, right? That goes through the middle of the part. Now, as far as SolidWorks goes, when we model this, datum A is going to be our front plane. Okay, so we're going to sketch everything, right, in this view because it has the most information. So this is the front, right, and in this view it's also the front. This plane right here is going to be our top, and this plane right here is going to be our right. So the right plane would also show up in this view, okay? Hopefully it'll make more sense when we put it in SolidWorks, but it's very important to get your datum reference frame uh, in SolidWorks. That way when you go to output the drawing, all the dimensions are gonna come from the right place. Now if you notice in this drawing, say the location of any of these holes, let's look at this one right here for now. This 2.2 is coming from the center of this circle, not the side of the part. And that goes for any of these dimensions. They're all coming from this axis right here in the middle of the part. So you've got to set it up in SolidWorks so you can output it to a drawing and have everything uh, as a driven dimension. Uh, so you can use model items and that way, if you need to change a dimension, you can do it from the drawing. And it's just a very robust way to build uh, a model. And when you get to the assembly stage, everything should work a little bit better as well. When we get to the drawing, I'll discuss a little bit about adding the MMB in our feature control frame and talk a little bit about this all around symbol. So let's switch over to SolidWorks and model this up. So I'm going to start with an extrude boss base. I'm going to select the front plane. That's where most of our information is. Now, unlike some of the other parts, I'm going to start with a circle right here. Because that's a datum feature, I'm going to base everything else around it. So I'm going to draw a corner rectangle because this part isn't uh, symmetric about this. So our circle is centered here. We're going to add in the dimension for that right off the bat and it's going to be 1.252. And we'll go ahead, since we've already got this open, we'll make it three decimal places and add in our tolerance, which is plus or minus two thousandths. All right, so that's settled. Now we're going to come off the center of this circle for all of our other dimensions. So from this side to this side, it's two and a half inches. From the center of the circle to the right side, right, we're looking at three inches. Oh, and I made a mistake there. I'm just going to hit Control Z and go back. So back to Smart Dimension, center of the circle, this side, three inches. I'm going to punch that in. I'm going to change all of these to basic dimensions at the same time. So from the center of the circle to the bottom, we're at one and a half inches. And from the center of the circle to the top, and I want to make sure I get that center selected, we're going to be two inches. And that's almost all we have to do there. Getting everything selected to change the tolerance can kind of be difficult, right? So I'm going to get them all selected. And now see how they're all uh, highlighted blue I can come over here and change them they're all going to be three decimal place see how they all change and they're all going to be basic so I can do all of that at once so I'm happy with that I'm going to exit the sketch and we're going to extrude it in a single direction to 0.5 inches and just hit green check all right so now I'm going to get hit control one to go to the front view and we're going to uh, extrude cut these three holes. So I'm going to select, I'm going to go to extrude cut, select this top plane. I'm going to sketch three or, uh, you know, sketch three holes. I don't care where they are right now because I'm going to have to add smart dimensions to them to uh, locate the holes. So let's do this one right here on the right. We're going to go from the center 
to the center of this. With this dimension, make sure it's not diagonal. You want it to be perfectly horizontal. We're going to be 1.6 inches. And then if you notice in the previous one, we went one and a half inches from the center of the circle to the bottom of the drawing. We're actually going to use that for the hole as well. So I'm going to go from the center of the hole to the center of this, and we're going to do a horizontal relation. Okay, so that one and a half inch dimension is really going to apply to both of these features. Now all of the holes are going to be the same size, and on the drawing, it's the diameters on the left. So let me take care of that real quick. This is going to be 0.482. Let me go ahead and add the tolerance. It's symmetric, three decimal places, plus or minus two thousandths. And now I can go in and select all three with control and make them all equal. And I did that so that now I can see this one is black, so I know it's fully defined, so I can feel comfortable moving on to the next one. So the next one is two and a half, two point two inches away, the one on the right from the center. So I'm going to establish that dimension. Two point two. And now I'm going to go in, and since it is horizontal with uh, the center as well, and we know it's horizontal uh, because it's not shown as having some other dimension. So that's just implied on the drawing as a basic dimension uh, of zero. All right, and the last one, this is going to have two dimensions. We're going to go, oh, we're going to go from the center here, up here, and this is uh, the horizontal dimension. It's point. Oh wow, I was wrong. So it's going to go from the center of the hole, this hole, on the left to here, and let me get this selected in the right order. So center of this hole to here. This is point eight one one. And then we're going to go center of this hole to here. Now you might say, what's going on here? You know, these uh, these dimensions aren't connected. As long as they're basic dimensions, it's okay. Um, they they're all looped together, uh, so it kind of forms a, a chain. You couldn't really do this with plus or minus dimensions. But I'm going to do the same thing uh, with these four. I'm going to hit Control and select them all. And the trick here, I'm going to double click on this last one. And then our uh, our dimension window pops open, and I can go ahead and make these all basic. Now you could do this in the drawing as well, but I find it easy enough just to go ahead and uh, punch in all this information, so it's just less to do at the drawing stage. So I'm going to exit the sketch here. We want to do through all because these are through holes, and hit green check. Right, and that's it for modeling. Right, so let's go ahead and uh, make a drawing here. So I'm going to go to our B size drawing. It'll show up over here. We go to drawing, model view. It'll show up as what I need it to be. All right, so I've got preview checked here. This is probably good enough. So I'm going to do my front and my right views. I'm going to click green check. And now the moment of the truth, I'm going to go to annotation, model items, click on that front view, and it should bring in most of my dimensions. Didn't bring them in on all of them, so I'm going to click on this circle over here. And now it's going to bring in everything. Now SolidWorks is pretty smart. I mean, this is pretty close to the finished drawing. We've just got to move a couple things around for uh, readability reasons. I'm going to scooch this one over, and that's we're almost there, right? These basic dimensions all look good. You might want to come in and move some of these extension lines around, although yeah, they, they look pretty good right here. Okay, let's start with our datum features. With datum A, I'm going to click on this surface and then just pull it down here. Datum B, we're going to have to wait. We need to add a position to this. So let's go ahead and do that. We have a geometric tolerance. I'm going to click on the dimension. And the dialog will open up here after I click on it. Position. We're looking, oh, I'm sorry. Not position, but this is good anyway. So to change it, I'm going to double click right here, and now we can change the geometric characteristic symbol. So we're going to do uh, perpendicularity of two thousandths. Be sure to click on the diameter symbol, and we're going to uh, make this apply at maximum material condition. So I'm going to go in this uh, drop down, material condition, click on the M. 
Now we just add a datum. It's going to guess datum A and we're good with that. So I'm going to click done. I'm going to click green check over here. Now we can add the datum feature directly to our feature control frame, just like the drawing. Hit green check over here. And now this whole thing will move together. All right. Let's do the flatness and the parallelism real quick. Geometric tolerance. I'm going to apply it here. All right, the tolerance is flatness. We want the, the actual tolerance to be 5,000, 0 0.005, and then we're done. Now, the way this leader is set doesn't look very nice, so I'm going to double click out here in the drawing to get out of the, the feature control frame window. And what I want to do is get rid of the leader. So over here in the geometric tolerance window, I'm going to uncheck leader, or I'm going to hit this no leader button. And now it's going to attach directly to the extension line. So let me pull it down here to make it look nice. All right. Now we're going to go do the parallelism. Geometric tolerance. We're going to apply it to this extension line. We'll just use a leader this time. It's just, for whatever reason, it's a little easier in this version of SolidWorks. So I picked the wrong one again. I'm going to double click that. And now we want parallelism, not cylindricity. The tolerance is 10 thousandths. We're going to add a datum. It guesses datum A. That's good. We're going to click done. I'm going to click out here so we, we get out of the geometric tolerance window. And now I can move it around. This is fine to just leave it the leader. Okay, let's do this profile. So geometric tolerance. I'm going to click on the outside of the part to establish the leader. We're going to do profile of the surface. The tolerance is 10 thousandths with three decimal places. Add datum, datum A, add new. Now we need datum B, and we're going to click down here on the MMC symbol to apply a material condition. Now the next step, we need the all around symbol. So I'm going to click on the geometric tolerance again, and over here, our all around symbol is right here, and it'll add it right to the break on the leader line. Okay. The last thing, we just need a position for these three holes. So I'm going to click on the, the dimension first, click geometric tolerance, and it's going to guess where it's supposed to go. See how the geometric tolerance is already there? I'm going to click in this box, right, position. We're going to go to seven thousandths. Go down here to material condition, click the MMC. And then I uh, forgot in a range, we're going to click the diameter symbol right here because it's a cylindrical tolerance zone. Datum A stays the same. Add new. We're going to do the same thing we did before. B, MMC, done. All right? And that's it. You've, uh, if you follow the video, you've correctly made this drawing. That's just some more basic stuff with uh, GDMT. The most important thing, though, was setting up the datum reference frame with the planes in the part. So if I go back to our part here, right, when we select our planes, right, they're right where they should be. All of the dimensions are originating from the center of the part, just like the drawing. So that's it for this video. Just submit the uh, PDF to Blackboard and you'll be good to go.